We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. And tonight, we're going to be answering those questions live. Technically, we're always live, but we don't get the questions live. We do research and we prepare. Instead, we're just going to be going right off the tip of our tongues or on our toes. Keep us on our toes. Because right now, it's that time of year where there's just a lot going on. Uh, exams are coming up for my kids and they're stressing out over that. One of my kids' are glasses broke today and I tried to fix them and that didn't go well. Uh, the spring festivals here in Windsor have started, as they like to call the unofficial start of summer. Uh, concerts are happening again and my daughter's been performing in a couple. And also non-critical medical procedures are starting to happen again here in Ontario. And for me at least, this means uh, bringing my mom, myself and other family members out to doctors quite often. And at this point, it feels like we have something, and in most days, two to three things that we need to get to that is kind of interfering with all the game plan and talk about games and blog writing and stuff like that. And apparently no one ever told my industry to slow down. So aside from production shortages... <laughs> yeah, you've been way busier than you ever used to be. It's a little crazy. So, sorry, a little, a little bonkers. Now, due to all this hubbub, I wanted to use tonight's show as a bit of a break, a chance to let my hair down, relax a bit, have a couple coffees, which I may have to get a refill before we get too far into this, and hang out and chat with you awesome folk in our lobby, and, you know, maybe answer some gaming questions, since that's what we're actually here for. My hair is always down, since I haven't worn it up in about 25 years since it was halfway <laughs> down my back. It still counts. It's, it's down in a way. The beard's down. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So to get the conversation started and to give everyone in the chat, now's your chance. Start getting your questions in. Um, I've got a question for Sean, who I know has been reading a ton more superhero books, but more on the way, including sharing some pictures online of his, uh, his most recent parking lot reading and so on. So Sean, as of right now, what's the best superhero game you found for your style of play? And why is it the best? What makes it work for you? Well, I mean, for me, I think people have to really understand and the way I'm looking at games personally for me is how I play. And that is not only online, but it tends to be online asynchronous. Right. So we aren't getting together on, uh, you know, a voice and video chat all at the same time and playing for four mm -hmm. hours with a VTT or even a whiteboard. Uh, generally speaking, we're playing more like a uh, play by post almost uh, from, okay. from back in the day. But in a little more real time, a little more real time than that, due to the flexibility of Discord. Uh, so as a result, uh, dice are just kind of annoying. Um, so the more crunch you get, the more interference you get, the less uh, the less ability to free play and and narrate because you know if every if every time someone acts, you need to roll dice, that really mm. puts a, uh, a skid on the things. As a result, uh, so far for me, masks has really been just kept <laughs> keeps ending up okay. being the one. Um, I, I I tried to go somewhere else, and we came back to masks because it's just uh, well known, it's flexible, and there aren't that many roles. Uh, if you know, as long as everyone knows what they're doing, and 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 you're not helping people play, we've got a, a couple of experienced groups of players now, uh, and so you can really just kind of let loose and. The rolling comes naturally as it is, and you know you suggest what you need to roll. The DM jumps in, you roll it, and everyone moves on. Uh, and the wonders with the wonders of Discord, the ability to thread things uh, has been fantastic. So, so one question I do have, and I know we don't like to talk too negatively about games on here. What other games did you try that you end up going back to masks on? Like you tried something else, went you know what that doesn't quite work, and now we went back. Yeah, uh, it was, um, I'm trying to remember now. It was the adventure one. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Uh, amazing, amazing heroes. Uh, but it, the, the problem with it was, it was a single. What was the image and story system, right? Yeah. That was the mechanics. And so it was, it was fine. And I think at a table, especially with a younger crowd, it's a really good game. The problem we were having is, all of us as players and as a DM really prefer the bell curve. Um, right. You, you want that aspect of the heroes are going to be, you know, come out better more often than not. Uh, and masks allows that where the amazing stories one was a single role, no curve. 
Uh, and so the randomness just kind of stuck out a little bit more, uh, possibly mm-hmm. because we'd been used to playing a uh, bell curve system. Right. But uh, yeah, that really kind of uh, impacted the, the kind of stories we were telling. All right. Got some questions to follow up from the chat. Uh, why do you prefer to play that way, Sean? Why do you prefer playing online? Just time availability? Uh, it's the groups of people I've run in with. Uh, basically, all the people who I have hooked up with and play are we have a number of different time zones and things. So uh, while we do occasionally all kind of sync up and play in a more real time uh, method, it's all still done through Discord chats. And that's just how we all lined up and hooked, connected together. Now, when it started, it was play by form, wasn't it? Like intentionally? Uh, some, yeah, some of the game I, I've been, yeah, I mean, we go, you can all go all the way back to, you know, aim and <laughs> all the, you know, ICQ and all, all the different. Uh, no, but like you're, you're playing supers games online that started with a play by form mask. Did it not? Uh, well, no, it starts way longer than that before pre <laughs> way pre masks. No, I mean, I have been, okay. uh, I've been playing superhero games online in one form or another um since i guess post university so it was uh modern internet but uh okay again it was one of those things where i played a little bit of D in university but very little and then mm-hmm. i get, went into a giant uh sort of lack of any role play um you know i wasn't back right. in Windsor, so i wasn't playing with you at all other than you know the occasional time i managed to get down and, and play a single game uh, and I was just really craving RPGs and, and I found some, you know, super fans and, and some games uh, popped up and I just kind of kept going with that with that. So. All right. Sounds good. Another follow up question from Jeff. Have you tried City of Mist yet? Uh, I'm trying to remember what City of Mist is. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to say no. Oh, that's the cinematic. No, I have not yet. I recognize the cover. I know the name. I know yeah. nothing more about City of Mist. No, I have not. At all. You haven't tried the Fate one, have you? Fate Core? Centurions, I think it's called? Uh, no. I, the one that I'm I'm sort of looking at. Because I was looking at that one. Just Someone someone was talking about, it was an interesting side topic, uh, novelizations based on role-playing games. And, like, of course, there's, there's the D&D novels and everything. And well, someone pointed out there's one based on Fate. And I'm like, there's a Fate novel. And I'm like, wait, I think I got that from backing fate core and when i did and i looked into it i'm like yeah sure enough but it's specifically for this game centurions which looks to be more of a leave the extraordinary gentleman style right uh the one i'm i'm uh sort of really interested in and I've, they've been dribbling out the content for is the superpower companion for from pinnacle for suede savage world uh, yeah. savage world adventure uh so they've been dribbling out content just this morning uh, I got the email saying that all their VTT content is now downloadable and, and usable. Um, but it's we, like, I honestly have had trouble keeping track of what all they have released and what all they have. And it was a Kickstarter, but they just kind of, you know, hey, come to our site and download this new thing. And you go to their site and there's 20 different things to download. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sh- the dates are all weird. So I'm not even sure what's right to download, <laughs> what's new, what I haven't, what I have already. They don't version number very well. Uh, so it's been a bit frustrating. I'm kind of just w- mostly waiting to get some hard copy in my hands. See, I'm, I'm amused by that because uh, recently there's a Humble Bundle deal. I think it's on right now actually for Starfinder, um, which I can drop. If anyone's interested in Starfinder, I'll drop a link in the chat, uh, a, an affiliate link. Why not make us some money, right? Um, and you can get basically everything Starfinder digital. And like I shared this and someone big name in the industry, I'm not going to say who came out and was like, I would so love to back this, but I hate getting PDFs from Paizo. Because they do the same thing. They don't use drive through. They don't send them to your email. They give you a login code and a password, and you have to go to their site and download it. And I'm like, you know what? I did that once, and I remember it being painful, but it was enough years ago that I just assumed they improved. And from what I'm hearing it, no. <laughs> no, and like the 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 PG one is not. It's yeah, not it's, good. Like, I, I, it's probably all using the same software in the back end. That people don't want to rely on third party like drive through. Yep. Except at the same time, drive through works really well. Their library system and updates mm-hmm. are really smooth. Like yeah. it, it's just, it just works. And and having another login to re, to deal with, it, this is twenty twenty two. Less logins, the more better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else we got here? Um. So Pax asks, 
what would you most uh, what would you like most to see from designers and publishers in engagement with you, both before, during, and after the review process? So this one is uh, is a little hard to answer. So the big thing is just lots of communication up front. And I, I, honest communication, I hate wording it that way. But um, in the perfect world, all the designer and publisher needs to do is go, hey, we are looking for someone to review this game. And then I write them and say, here's what we offered, an unboxing video, a live review on Twitch where it's two talking heads converted to a video review on YouTube, also written up as a blog post. So you get a written review and we release on our podcast. That way people can watch it, listen to it or read it because that's our big thing. And then at that point, that's it. I send them that and they say, sounds good. And it shows up. And then I expect to get a completed game that I then unbox and we play at least five times and I review it and then we're kind of done. In, in a perfect world, that's how it works. The problem is somewhere along the way, sometimes that breaks down. Now, most common, um, all our patrons just got a, today I sent a behind the scenes note where I was kind of ranting about, about a recent game we were, we were asked to review that we could not review. Um, in a perfect world, that's it. Like the thing, in addition to that, okay, I'm gonna jump back a bit. In addition to that, if you want more, tell me. So all I want is more. If that's, I just offer you what we're going to give you. If you want more, tell me. Don't expect anything else other than what I just offered. We're going to unbox it. We're going to play it five times. We're going to review it in three formats. If you want more than that, don't just sit back and expect more than that. I don't care what other reviewers did for you in the past or what you're used to getting. That's what I'm offering. So don't be upset if you don't get it before your Kickstarter launches or if you want it in a week or if you wanted the review to feature more actual play shots, or if you were looking for a live play and not a review, those are not what I offer. So I want clarity of what you are expecting from me. I am telling you what we're offering. If that's not enough, say something. Don't just send the game and then start writing me going, oh, where's your review? I'm like, I'll get to it. I told you I had to play the game five times. That takes time. I'm not gonna play it five times in a row. I like to play your game with different groups. Isn't that good for you? So you get the opinion of more than one group. I usually try to hit three different groups of players before I do it in those five plays. If you want me to just get the game, play it once and review it, I can do that. But what I think sets us apart from us, some of the reviewers is that we don't do that, that we actually do give the game a deep dive. Um, an example of that tonight's Charterstone review. The reason it has taken so long is not only did I wait till we finished the campaign, we even tried the game once we were done before I wrote up the review because I wanted to get the full experience. So it's 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 just like we talked about it. almost all of our board game night advice. Anytime we're talking board game night advice is set expectations. I just want the expectations to be set. Don't expect more than what was stated. Um, and if you're asking for a review, provide us a game that we can review a preview, you know, in the, well, even a preview, you should be able to play the game. <laughs> if you, yeah. if you can't play the game again, we, we were, we were generous. Um, and if in theory, Hellbringer could have been more problematic because when we sat down with the rule book, we couldn't play the game. Now yeah. with the actual play, there was videos and things where, where you could work out what to play. And then we had Somewhat. the wonderful health help of, max online yes. but that should not be something that's expected yes. um that that should be something where look we have a game that's you know not ready yet we would like you to preview it uh it's not ready for publication yet mm -hmm. it's a whole different thing but if you say hey i've got a game ready to preview it better be ready oh, even preview. worse is it ready to review because right. that was not sold to us as a preview it was sold to us a review where we would provide a prototype copy Right. which as far as we knew just meant the physical components weren't finished right now in all fairness max thought his game was done right so i get it in a way but um the, the, like i said it's expectations um if you want a preview call it a preview you cannot review an unfinished game because it's no longer review as soon as something changes whatever we said about it could be completely false and wrong by the time the game's published that's why it's not a review. Like technically you could kind of say it's a snapshot of the review that is in this part of the progress or whatever of the design. But in real reality, that's a preview. Now I do know a lot of people realize 
that um, think that preview means paid preview. That is not the case. We have at this point not charged for any of this. Yeah, no, absolutely. We don't, uh, we don't, we have not yet charged anyone for the previews, but no. we also don't provide the full video fancy. Well, exactly. Which is again, companies. something I've had people who expect that again, if I'm offering you an unboxing video and a review in three formats, that's what you should expect to get. Um, and like I said, I, and I'm, we're willing to do more. And I've mentioned it before, I think we're probably going to try to be done with previews. It's not something we're going to continue doing, or we're going to work up a fee schedule. Because so far, every single preview we have done, I have ended up being an unpaid playtester, developer, sometimes editor. And every single one, because I am the type of reviewer that when I get a game and it doesn't make sense, I'm going to reach out and say, hey, this doesn't work. How is it supposed to work? And so many times I get written back going, oh, I didn't realize it was a problem. Here, try this. Here, try that. As soon as you're saying, here, try this, here, try that, I'm now a developer for your game. I'm even a play tester because you're asking me to try out new rule variations. Yeah. I mean, we have talked about this in episodes past. You need to blind play test your game. Yes. And, and that was the, the clear missing component here. I mean, yes, it's fantastic that Max knows how his game works. Max yes. can teach anyone his game. And it turned out we actually liked the game. Mm -hmm. But unless Max is going to come with every box of Hellbringer you yes. buy, there needs until to be we're some... at the point where you get the max hologram <laughs> to teach you the game there there needs to be some uh some better rule management there and there were language issues and it seems yeah. like uh the translator may have missold him on what they Their were able to, to do who knows? we don't know we don't know yeah. all the background stuff but uh whatever the result was it was out of the box an unplayable game i am your emergency game night hologram please state the nature <laughs> of the board game night emergency I know. <laughs> totally picturing like Max showing up <laughs> to teach you the game. There you go. You're gonna put Rodney Smith out of out of business. You're gonna show up and you're just gonna load the game hologram. It's gonna teach you how to play. Um, but yeah, now one of the things that I don't do is I will ask for clarification. Um honestly, the, this may sound bad, maybe we've sold out whatever you want to call it, but I hate doing reviews where we get nothing out of it. And in these preview cases, sometimes that's literally what we get. Like, I don't even have a copy of the game. I have to send it back so we can send it to another reviewer. I have literally nothing to show for it except the content we put out. And that's it. And basically, we're working for, um, what do you call it? Exposure <laughs> at that point, right? Like, that's basically what we're doing. Now, with board game bigger companies, usually I at least get a copy of the game. Not much payment. What I look for now is something that we can then sell after in the form of affiliate links. So when someone's like, we have a finished game, we're going to send it to you. I now find out, can I buy that game on Amazon? Can I get it at Game Nerds? Can I download the RPG off drive through? Is there somewhere I can provide links to people where we at least get a bit of a kickback? Now, again, depending on the game, if the game's a big enough game and the value of the game is enough, then it's not that bad. But if it's some little small $15 card game, um, I don't want to name names. I was trying to decide on some of the ones that are out. But there, there's a bunch of smaller games that we reviewed. I'm probably going to say no to more of those. Or again, work out a fee schedule. The difference is once we start doing fees, then we have to disclose a lot more. We don't, we currently always admit when we get a review copy, but I don't put up the YouTube, this is a paid promotion because we were not, no cash exchanged hands. Once cash exchanges hands, we have to start putting that up. And then there you get into the whole worry of people about our credibility at that point. Now, I really don't think it's going to be a problem. I think we've now established over the last three and a half years how fair we can be about a game. But it then becomes another thing to another concern of ours. Yep. No, it's so, it's it's a, it's a strange thing um, because essentially, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, you get a copy of the game. Well, that's great. But if it's a $20 game and we've spent two, three hours writing reviews, another couple hours taking and editing pictures, another hour or so editing up the video and posting the video, and then all the time that they spent promoting and tweeting and publishing the reviews, you're looking at, you know, let's, let's say for a small, easy game, you know, doesn't take much time, easy to get five plays out of card, you know, comes in a tuck box, uh, 10 to 12 hours. Yeah. At $25 right. in 10 to 12, 12 hours for three people, for three people. <laughs> that's not a lot of money. Oh. Um, that's not even, you know, I, there are, there are probably some African company countries where that is minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but <laughs> it's also a lot cheaper to buy. I, said, I, I, I hate to sound greedy. Like, yes, we do this for fun and we do it for the love of gaming. And, and our goal is to make everyone's game night better, but it has to be worth doing or else we just can't do this. And exactly. Yeah. There, there's, there are paying jobs that will actually allow us to put food on the table, yes. uh, but not do the same, spend these, this amount of time doing the reviews. Right. Uh, it's one or the other, essentially. So, yeah, in a way, yeah, pretty much. So yeah, mainly it's, it, I, I will now go out and go, is your game finished? Um, is it completely finished? And then I'll clarify, is it really finished? Like, are the rules complete? Um, will, where can I get your game? Is now a question I will ask. Um, wh where can I get my game? And for all these Kickstarter previews, it's always, where am I, where are people going to be able to buy the game once Kickstarter is done? As soon as they say Kickstarter exclusive, I'm now getting nothing out of this. I, I am giving you clout and attention and I am getting to preview a game. Now, usually with Kickstarters, I will make a deal to get a copy of the finalized game. And if the game's big enough, that might be enough. At least it's something. Again, at least it's something. Yep. But like I said, previews were probably done. I, I will fully admit here, I did say it to our patrons earlier today that, that I, I am, it's going to be very rare that I accept a preview of a game. Like I said, until we possibly sit down and, and decide on some kind of fee schedule for it. And then we'll start producing advertainment. But then we get into the whole people, they don't like us saying anything negative. They're now paying for it. And do they get the right to edit and all that other fun stuff? I kind of don't want to go there. So Jeff is mentioning that Rodney Smith would be DLC, the $4.99 Rodney Smith skin for Game Night Hologram. There you go. If you prefer Paul Grogan, you could also get Paul. And, you know, you can get some Becca Scott going. That's the, the Geek and Sundry bonus pack. There you go. <laughs> Uh, all righty. Uh, so Tex asking, I noticed you played Azul again recently. Are you still really impressed with it? Impressed isn't really the right word anymore. Like, like it's, it's past the point of impressing me, but it's still a really solid game. Um, now what I will admit is we're mostly playing online. Um, Sean, Dan, and I have a ongoing Azul game now that kind of replaced. Remember for months there, we were always playing seven wonders. Now we're always playing Azul. And what I like is in the last while, we've switched to using the back side of the board, which I just find way more, I don't know why, way more interesting, Absolutely. way more engaging. No, I'm, I definitely agree. There's a, there's a lot more thought to it. It's yeah. really easy to not quite pay enough attention or jump ahead of what, uh, in your own planning and put something in there that completely messes you down the road. Yep. Um, so yeah, we've been, we've been playing that a lot online. We did play in person too. Um, we had one of the nights Cat and Tori were over, we broke it out. I still like it. Um, I, I have no problems with with Azul. I still like Azul. I will note that we're playing the original, even though I've said before I prefer Sintra. Well, or not Sintra, sorry, yeah, Summer Pavilion. Yeah. I, my copy of Summer Pavilion and Sintra haven't been touched in, well, since Sean was down in Windsor, like pre-COVID, when we were playing in easy mode. Right. It was the last time those came out. So yeah, still digging as well. Azul's a great game. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm kind of surprised because like, if you ask me and I'm like, which do you prefer? I'd mention the other one, but what do I play? I play the original. Yeah, and I, I none of us have still seen the newest one. So no. Uh, and I've heard good things about it, but we have yet to I, see I it. have heard it is heavy, like like heavy, heavy. Like, oh, okay. like, like blows away Sintra. Sintra seems simple compared to it. Oh, wow. Which I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Yeah, no, part of the part of the fun of Azul is the the not brainless, but, you know, that coffee shop conversation mm -hmm. as you play. Um, yeah, where, whereas I'm pretty think, sure the new one, you're you're focusing on yeah, your game. So you need to be able to think in Azul, but you don't have to spend 100% of your time focused uh, throughout that game. Um, that's And, the, and the, the, the digital version is great. I mean, I, I have to say the BGA mm -hmm. has done a fantastic job implementing the original Azul. I, I can't really find any fault with it at all, honestly. No, there's nothing. The, the scoring is a little obscure, but once you play it on BGA, yeah. <laughs> it does all that for you. You may not get why. So Ryan asked, uh, did your Seven Wonders play include cities and or leaders? No, none of that was on the, the BGA version. It was just, it was the new version, the, the second edition of Seven Wonders, which is tweaked a bit and honestly does seem a little better. Like well, I was enjoying. Me, actually, it wasn't. When we first started playing, it was still first. And then it, uh, yeah, at it some swapped. point, it swapped over and confused all of us. Yeah, and it was <laughs> hard at Why first because it felt like you didn't have enough resources. But I actually prefer the new edition. Um, if I loved the game, I would replace my copy with the new version. But I don't love it enough to do that myself. Plus, we get kind of sick of it playing so many. But no, there were no expansions online. As far as I know, they still haven't added any. Yeah, it was a little I, I haven't checked in ages. Uh, 
I made my big mistake of accidentally clicking OK, I'll play again for Deus. Uh, <laughs> which <laughs> that's, that's another one we should add on the list to play when you're down here. The white had to reread the rules because it uh, I mean, I, it's not hard. I mean, it's straightforward. I just I'm not really enjoying it, I guess. So. <laughs> I don't know. Deus, Deus uh, is one of those games that's on my shelf. And the if I had time, I would give it one more shot. Like I would make this a podcast segment. I would call it, you know, whatever. Hit me with your last shot or something. Right. Give me your last shot, whatever. And then we would play out, play it. And then I would decide keeper to get rid of late it. And I would let everyone know. Late huh? checkout. Late checkout. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> whatever we're gonna call it. It's, it's like last chance, right? Like uh, get get booted. And we're I would totally do that. But checkout. like, uh, hmm? I, I love that. We're calling down for a late checkout for our, yeah. this game. So there you go. Does so it, yeah, it, we may have a new segment. Or is it out the door? <laughs> yeah, does it get late checkout or does it does it get to stay an additional late or the room upgrade? No, yeah. room upgrades will no. be used for uh that's your box. Yeah, I keep forgetting about build. clans. Yes, you I gotta to do, do that damn block insert build. I forgot about it again. I don't even know where the insert is. It's not where it sat for months. All right. Uh another question. So, so that was a good one. Pax uh is uh Pax's husband is reading Pillars of the Earth right now. Mm -hmm. And I know you shield deals on that game and it's well regarded. Have you ever played that box that I know you have in your basement? Because oh, I yeah. can picture where it yep. is on the shelves. Fantastic game. Uh, it's it's a you don't need to know the books. Um, it almost inspired me to read the books, but I didn't because they're they're thick and there's a bunch of them. So I didn't get into it. Um, has the best um, physical timing mechanism I've seen in a game. Because every round you build more of the cathedral, and the cathedral's made of wood, and you literally add chunks until the full cathedral is built, which looks really neat. Um, it is very much a engine building game. It's a start off by finding a way to start getting bricks. All right, now that you've got bricks, find a way to start turning your bricks into to um, or whatever. Start getting clay. All right, find a way to get your bricks turned or your clay turned into bricks. Now that you've got bricks, start building windows and stuff like that. And you're trying to get a progression, hiring characters from the novels to break the rules, as well as hiring generic like builders types and like you know the person the glazier who makes glass and whatever. The best part about that game is it has a very unique initiative system. Don't delete stuff. I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna need it for the show notes. No, no, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Thought I saw something vanish. No. Just... Like I need to know. Otherwise, I gotta listen to every damn word we say. <laughs> <laughs> so the best thing in that game is there is a very unique. I call it an initiative system. So you put all your workers into a bag. It's the pillars of the earth from. Um, oh, I'm trying to blank on Ken Follett is the one who wrote yes, the novels. Ken Follett's Pillars of the Earth. Um, there's also something end of the world, edge of the world. That one wasn't as good. I have both. I, I never. It, yeah. It's it's part two of the series, whatever it's called. End of the Earth might be end of the Earth, end of the world. It's also Ken Follett. Anyway, you put all everyone's workers in the bag and you pull them out, and then you can use it. But the first one to come out costs more money. So you're like, I can pay to go first, or I can put my guy aside. But I'm gonna go after everyone that paid. So like, I get one of my guys, and I'm like, oh, I can't afford it. I don't have the money, so I put him aside. And then I pull another one. And I pull myself again, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. Okay, fine, I don't go. And then you pull another one, and Sean, Sean's like, oh yeah, I'll play. I'll go first. And the next one comes out, and it's D and D's like, yeah, yeah, I'll go. And then it, and then mine finally comes up. I'm like, okay, I would like to go at least third, you know. And you pull them out in this little thing, and they go on the stained glass window to show the player order. That's amazing. Like I like that system enough. I really thought it would show up again because this is not a new game. This is like an old, like we were playing this when we were playing Catan and Carcassonne and Power Grid, right? It's in that early two thousands era. Really so, solid uh, game. World without end. World without. I knew there were worlds and ends involved. World without end. World without end is not as good. It's it's a solid Euro, but it feels dated. Pillars of the Earth does feel like one of those older early two thousands Euros, but there's enough neat little things in there. But it's very much a euro. You're you're not. You don't feel like you're building a cathedral. You don't feel like you're involved in the novels. You don't get to know the characters. You're just playing a euro worker placement game and getting the most glory or fame or whatever they give you for contributing the most to the the cathedral. Yep. But yeah, worth picking up. Worth worth checking out, especially with deals. It was out of print for a long time and going for ridiculous money for a long time. And then um, I think it's Cosmos was like, we're finally going to put it back out in the market. And everyone was like, oh my God, it's back in the market. But I think they overproduced it and overestimated the number of fans who were looking for copies in between. Uh, and there is an expansion set for that as well. Yeah, that I do not have. So, 
I think it's uh, one of those smaller, like Queenie style expansions. So the but... original printing was 2006. Yeah, see? Uh, and to the 2018 was the most recent printing. Uh, and again, it might start becoming hard to find again. Seven. So this is another one that I think may become hard to find again. Oh, Not and actually, the computer. expansion cards are only good for the Mayfair games and Philos Philosophy. So the original printing only. So, so the new edition you can't use. Though, I guess they must they must have changed the quality then. Yeah. That's uh, interesting. Mine, mine is the original printing. Like I said, probably bought in two thousand six, two thousand seven, right. back then. I say it kind of feels like that time period. But if you enjoy those drier heroes, I think you'll like it. Right. Okay. Well, coming up, uh, we got sort of two parter here from Ryan. Uh, to date, what tabletop bell top projects have been more successful than expected, and which ones have been less so or just failed to pan out? Well, the second part of that one is really yeah. And I know, I know the <laughs> second one. We've answered that one on an AMA before. Maybe we can come up with something more recent because we that's been a long time. I don't know more successful than expected. I don't know. Like we've had specific episodes do way better than we thought they would, and I've had certain blog posts stick out. Like, I can't believe people aren't sick of two-player games. I still get <laughs> asked about two-player games. Um, I actually I actually was very tempted to steal a meme off the internet and do best tea time games because of uh, the Gale thread. That might actually be our topic next week. I may steal that one. Best tea time games, which are games that for two players that play under half an hour that you play while having your tea. Not that we have tea, but <laughs> we've done two-player games, but I don't think we've done less than half-hour ones and ones you can play over having tea, so... We may steal that topic next week. Two yeah, player it's got to be light enough to play, but because it's your first tea of the morning is the key. Yes. Is the key. yes so. The first tea of your, which most people replying to that thread didn't read. <laughs> and it drove me nuts. People trying to tell me I can play power grid in half an hour. when I first get up Yeah, and pandemic sure. legacy, what? <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Sure. Let's, let's fit in 24 games uh, in half I, an hour. I would say, I mean, for as, as sort of more expected or more successful than expected, I'm actually reasonably happy with uh the brunch I, it hasn't been like overwhelmingly fantastic we haven't you know garnered a whole yeah new, we didn't blow up or anything <laughs> we haven't garnered a whole new uh set of people but you know there's enough people out there who are enjoying it and we generally get a little bit of con a little bit of back and forth uh on mm -hmm. on the sundays and uh you know people have said that they like what we're doing so you know as far as i'm concerned that's kind of good enough i'm not, we're not real picky there's one thing that, that is doing better than I thought it would and doing rather well is uh, that most people probably don't even know we do. And that is as an Amazon influencer. Yes, I'm an Amazon influencer. It's actually a thing you can become. Um, I upload our unboxing videos to Amazon. And when you go to buy games, there's a chance you'll be able to see my videos over on the side or somewhere. I don't even know where they put them, to be honest. And there are some of those that are performing way better than anything we put out. Well, not way better than anything because the dang Gloomhaven there. The one thing that was more successful than I expected is the yeah. Gloomhaven FAQ that's still getting hits. <laughs> that's going to be a forever thing. I don't think we'll ever top that. But yeah, it's this thing where I upload videos and I upload a thumbnail and I put it in a short description and it goes on Amazon and it sits there. And what I like about it is it's 100% passive income. Once I've uploaded the video, no one can comment on it. I don't have to go check things. I don't have to thumbs up and reply to people. It just, it's there and I get paid people watch it. It doesn't pay well, but it <laughs> still pays. And that has been as slowly going up, like the amount people are watching and the amount we make off it. But like most people wouldn't even know I'd have this. Like you can technically go to my influencer page and see all the videos I've uploaded as well as we also, uh, I don't maintain them, but we also have list of board game deals on there where I used to every day go update it. So there was always a list of the games on sale. We now do that on the web page instead um, go, go because more people see it. Com rather than Amazon. Yes. Yeah, so that people go to <laughs> tabletop L up, say Amazon. Um, so there are those there too, but I don't really do that. So that was the start of the influencer thing which actually panned out really well when it started, which was, I was still working then. Like we weren't even tabletop bellhop at that time. I was Windsor gaming and I shared deals there to help buy more games. That's all that was. So yeah, that the, the Amazon influencer program has worked out pretty well. Um, what they're now allowing is live videos. And I've been trying to figure out what the heck and why, or if it's worth it, like having me sit there and talk about some game with affiliate links or it's, review it like we are here. It's very much a, um, you know, it's, it's an network. influencer influencer, it's thing, not home, a shopping home network type thing. Content yeah. is what I think they're looking for on the live. 
So just like that, you know, it's it's just like what we're seeing now. By I don't even know, uh, Sean's already got it. Um, yeah. So so I don't know. I kind of looked into it a bit, but I'm like, I don't know. I could easily sit here and talk about some game if it would actually pan out to to work well. Yep. But I haven't followed it up. Um, stuff that failed. Obviously, the the <laughs> the uh, yeah, well, the I express. can't remember. Yes, yeah, so the Tabletop Bellhop Express. We've mentioned it before. Yeah, I have no idea. That was a ton of effort and zero, like zero. Yeah, pretty much. Reward. Nobody watched it. Nobody commented on it. Nobody cared. Yeah. Um, and we spent a chunk, a, a significant chunk of time in a short time frame trying yes. to get it turned around to do it. And it just was, it was basically take nothing. everything we're talking about tonight and cut it down to 15 minutes and re-record it. And then just add all the, you know, add and then all the Sean was video adding video and everything else. And... So I don't know. I, I that, but that was a while ago. I'm trying to think of stuff that hasn't panned out recently. Um, trying to live stream anything other than this. Yeah, all of our live streams have been like, much... like I've tried live streaming, like playing the Paranoia RPG because well, Paranoia RPG is um it is based on the pen and paper. We tried live stream. We were playing Star Wars: The Old Republic, which I know it's an older game, but some people like to watch people play older games. I think part of the problem is this: the the video game streamers um, have a certain like they they're they're regular. It's always the same time every day. Yeah. They have the followers. They're constantly in three hours. I'm going online. What am I going to be playing tonight? They're constantly talking on their socials about their streaming, mm-hmm. and we weren't doing that because it wasn't our focus ever. No. Um, and, and so I think, I think stream, the, the big streamers tend to just constantly put that content out there and their followers grow to expect that. So if you're not following in that path, you're not getting the kind of stream viewers. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's, is what it but is. Like, not, like we weren't even getting one or yeah. two viewers. Like it just, no one cared. Yeah. So that didn't really pan out, but that wasn't like a big plan. It was just kind of one of those, Hey, we're playing these video games together anyway. Why don't we stream it and see if we get people. Maybe maybe that'll get us some some people who will then come back and care about the other stuff. Part of the, and part of the tough with that is when there's nobody there, it's hard to keep up a patter, right? Well, you need yeah. to be talking to the chat, and if you have no idea if there's anyone there, or if you suspect or know that there is zero people there, it's hard to keep up that chat. So that when someone comes in, they're left with you know just watching us, just play. watching you play, and not that interaction, which is what drives mm-hmm. a lot of Twitch, right? It's it's not, not even the game. It's the personality behind the player that's uh, that's driving it. Uh, the other thing that never took off were the wish lists. I really thought, like, Deanna was really pushing that we make, like, I'll admit they haven't been updated forever. But wish lists for most, like, mommy bloggers and brand bloggers are huge. And we tried, like, I did, I don't even remember. I, we have, like, four or five different wish lists. And, like, you do them in, like, April so that they're live by the time Christmas and Google's already been able to fully SEO them. So they're showing up in page rank and then you should see a big boost in the holiday system or holiday system, sorry, holiday season. And that never, never really took off. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's the way I wrote them, what they're about. Gamers don't care. Like, like the Amazon deals do us well. That's totally different. Like boxing day sales, but I'm just talking about like, Hey, here's a wish list of stuff to get people. Like, we've got one on board game bling. Here's things you can pick up to improve your game. I've got one about replacing your paper money in your games with something better. Um, there's one for game masters. There's one for prototypers. Whoever's making board games. Like, maybe I just need to do wish lists that are just here's the best games this season. But it just feels like there's already a lot of those out there. So I was trying to angle for something people hadn't covered, and like they do okay. I can see like now and then I'm like, oh, we had a rash of sales of blank playing cards, blank dice, and dry erase, uh, whatever, standees. I'm like, someone obviously checked out my article, but it's never really exploded where we we actually thought that would be like heavy gift guides. Gift guide, yes. Yeah, sorry, gift guide is what I was saying. Yeah, Deanna's right. Not wish list, gift guides. Um. So uh, So as a sort of follow-up, I guess that was already sort of two questions, but uh, yeah. are there any bell- tabletop bellhop projects in the pipeline? I don't know. <laughs> I just i swear there's less I, as you get older i realize your time sense changes i'm like there's so many things i'm like we need to get this done and we need to get that done we need to get that done throwing something new in the mix just seems impossible at this point well i mean i should we should say that we have started the process on merch uh there were yes. some you know floods and things in ottawa that slowed things down but uh yes we we have that that is the next thing probably merch having merch is there um 
Dan and I need to sit down and get back to offering some form of product. I, I realize that sounds like bad industry <laughs> words and we sold out, but we, we have, uh, we've switched newsletter providers and we now have integrated our newsletters so that it can, D would know all these terms or whatever, work with our lead magnets or our tripwire will be more effective or whatever. Um, I started taking the courses D took so I can kind of see stuff. Um, you've seen a little bit of that. Like I now changed, um, changed our intro to say working with you to make your game nights better instead of striving to make everyone's game night better, which is vague and doesn't help you. So that was a, that was a brand change to make it more interesting. Um, so that's kind of still there in the background. Uh, all right. So yeah. Merch is coming. Merch is coming. Um, as for new content, like I keep saying, I need to do TikTok like that. That's the big thing now. Instagram. I don't know what's happening. I, and I, I'm not the only one to complain about this, but we went from getting 500 likes on our pictures. I shared to 50. Like, Inst like Instagram literally is Instagram yeah. is nose diving hard. Yeah like one tenth the interaction we used to have yeah. um it's going to be a 15 ounce bell hop mug actually 15 so big enough to hit the the highest setting on your Keurig, but not quite 16 it's gonna be a 15 ounce mug that is determined which uh yeah we would still love to know if anyone wants any particular type of merch because our, our merch provider is like hit me with whatever you want like we can probably figure something out all right uh <laughs> doubles his dice cup there you go uh <laughs> there you go interestingly just sort of back, jumping back a little bit to what we were talking about earlier azul has replaced carcassonne as the number one ongoing played game on board game arena wow um by almost double <laughs> so i guess people weren't as in love with carcassonne they just needed an alternative <laughs> I, I, carcassonne just, it's like seven wonders it's old yeah it's old um so as usual you can always find us here twitch.tv slash tabletop bellhop on wednesday nights um feel free to send in your questions ahead of time for doing an ama and all the usual stuff um if anyone has any last minute questions we can answer it mine's going to be what coffee am i going to drink next but i'm going to grab randomly for a box so i don't even know the answer to that well, that's it for, for tonight's ama we've been aiming to do one of these live q a periods about every other month so expect another one in August. Now remember, you don't have to wait for an AMA. We're here to answer your gaming and game night questions every week. If you got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. And at this point, I'm going to say, please, please send in those questions, because we are actually at the point where I need to ask you to send in questions. We are actually getting very low on our question pile. Like, we're going to have to start making up our own questions. And you may not like that because it'd be like, I don't know, what, what color do you like your orcs, Sean, green or red? <laughs> All righty. 